Good evening. I am Karen Hostetter, manager at Redland Community Library. Welcome to our third and final Zoom into History for this fall series. Zoom into History is a collaboration of Redland Community Library and Northeastern York County History in Preservation, commonly known as Nietzsche. While both the library and NICHEP organizers plan successful in-person programs in the past, I should add, both realize that with the precautions needed to keep individuals safe at this time, we work together to present quality virtual programs. Please use the chat if you wish to ask questions as attendees will be muted throughout the presentation and we will share your questions and comments afterwards, and then we will open it up for a Q&A. We will un unmute. Um, our own Charles Stamball, the founder and president of Nietzsche, will bring to life the story of Forest Park tonight, an amusement park that once delighted folks of all ages in Hanover, Pennsylvania. I have stories from my own parents who enjoyed the roller coaster with the star on top. I remember going roller skating with my brownie troops there. Um, just uh, wonderful memories and um, probably even more stories from grandparents that um, I just don't know. All right. Welcome, Charlie. Okay. Thank you very much. You can hear me all right? Yes. All right. Hey, first of all, I'm going to say welcome. My name is Charles Stamball. Uh, and like Karen said, I'm founder and president of Knee Chip. And you may ask, well, what is Knee Chip? And no, it's not a new type of potato chip. Knee Chip stands for Northeastern York County History in Preservation. We're just gonna take a few minutes to explain what NEACHIP is. NEACHIP started in uh, January, 2016. Um, and our mission is to preserve the history of North York, uh, Northeastern York County in these areas that I have listed here. Okay, this is our fifth year of operation. Uh, we were incorporated, we incorporate with the state and with the IRS as a nonprofit organization. We have in-person or Zoom meetings with guests. We tour local historical places. We do presentations. I'm doing another one on, when, on Wednesday at Lions Club. Uh, we have several DVDs and YouTubes. We also partner with, as you know, with the York County Library System. We have no paid staff, no membership fees, uh, no physical location, and we totally operate on private donations. <laughs> Needship.com presently has 85 pages, over 30 people honored, over 2,000 pictures and articles, history from 13 localities, including Northeastern School District, 260 links to other websites, has been referred to by many others. We have 7,500 unique hits. We are the largest website in your county, historical website. You can find us on Facebook, and our email list is now over 350. You can join us if you like on the using email. Here's some of the items we have for sale on our website. Um, these DVDs that we made, uh, the Blind Trail, Manchester History, Mount Wolf History, Northeastern School District History. Uh, we also have the, the History of Mount Wolf uh, book on, for sale on our website. Yeah, 
Now for our presentation. Come stroll with me down memory lane and experience with me back in time the birth and death of Hanover Forest Park located in York County, Pennsylvania. We're going to go back in time to the early 1900s. A local family wants to go on a picnic to Eckenberger Park, located in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Back then, the trolley was the fastest way to travel. Eckenborough Park was, is 16 wooded acres. It opened in June 25th, 1904. It had a picnic area, playground, horseshoe pits, small baseball field, and it was planted by a trolley company. This was the seed for the future Forest Park. It was named after the previous landover, Captain Eckenberger. He was a Civil War captain who defended Hanover twice from the Confederates. He was a very successful businessman and with his hand in many things in Hanover, he also included the railroad. Oh, here's our imaginary friends again. And while they're waiting for their trolley, let's do some side tracking of our own. We're going to look at the development of the York County trolley system. On September 30th, 1886, the York Street Railroad Company began service with two one horse cars traveling at a top speed of 15 miles an hour. And yes, somebody had to clean up the streets after them. Then six years later, they began operating their trolley cars with 600 volts DC. No more messy trips but it was only 13 miles an hour now. During the 1921, they had 68 trolley cars, 85 miles a track, and recording almost 11 million riders. Here's a map of the trolley system in York County. It went all the way up to York Haven. Um, and look, I don't know what Bittersville is, but it went over to Biggersville. They plan to go down to Avril. They plan to go up to Lewisburg, up to Dillsburg, connect up to Harrisburg. And then they also plan to go all the way over to Gettysburg. And this was back in 1910. And it went up uh, right near my house where I live in Mount Wolf. The trolley lines to Hanover in 1808, 1908, excuse me, Local newspapers were announcing that the York Street Rail Company's new Hanover line was open through Spring Grove. For 65 cents, you could now travel south to Hanover and back. The Hanover Maxuriesville Street, Street Rail Car Company began service in 1893, connecting Adams County to York County, and they both went to the park. Now we're gonna talk about trolley parks a little bit later here. Oh, I see our imaginary friends. They caught their trolley. So let's hang on and ride with them through Hanover. You can now ride and restore your county trolley there at Rock Hill uh, Trolley Museum in Pennsylvania. There's an actual picture of the trolley ending at Eckenberger Park. Oh, look, our friends made it to the park. Well, enjoy your picnic. Now you might wondering, where is this park located? I've never heard of it. Where is it? Well, if you take Route 30 west from York and across Keys, 
you're going to just before New Oxford, you're going to take the route 94 south to Hanover. And then in Hanover, 94 turns into Baltimore Street. Then it continues to Mount Olive Cemetery. Next to the cemetery is the South Hanover Shopping Center. That's where the park used to be. Hmm. Now, why did Hanover and McSherrysville Railway Company establish the park? Well, during the week, people kept the trolleys full going to and from work. But on weekends, very few people rode them. So the trolley companies created trolley parks to boost weekend riders and, of course, make a profit. Up oh, there's our friends again. Wave at them. At one time, there was four park trolley parks in your county. The first one was Highland Park in West Manchester St Township, started in 1891. The second one was Coal Springs in Manchester. Trolley cars would bring many people from the far reaches of York County to Coal Springs and to the nearby Elm Beach, where they swam in the Congo Creek. And you notice the bridge there uh, right above in the picture. The third park was in Brookside Park in Dover. The main attraction at the park was the 1896 Deadwell uh, Carousel. The carousel was there until 1974. The building is still standing. And now we're going to go back to Eckenberger Park in, home, in Hanover. I actually got my picture taken one time on the carousel that used to be in Dover there. As popularity grew at the park, so did the attractions. A new, brand new movie theater was built, a steam carousel was installed, a skating rink, dance halls were added. Then there was a restaurant, a horse, horseshoe pits, petting zoos, playgrounds, concession stands, which were owned and operated by locals. The park had two circuits of electric lights for nighttime operation. The uh, United Telephone Company even installed a telephone at the park. Lots of things have changed since our family first visited, visited, but it seems like happy days would never end at the park. But a tornado struck Hanover area, August 21st, 1915. It was much damage to the rail system and most of downtown Hanover and the park had much damage. Nine months after the tornado, Ecuador Park began preparing for the 1916 season. And while burning leaves too close, guess what happened? The restaurant and the picnic area were destroyed. These are actual pictures. The total uh, damage, total damage was a thousand dollars. They equate to twenty thousand today. That that was an expensive leaf burning project. In the following year, 1917, the U.S. entered World War One. The park was open to troops, and they honored the soldiers with dancing. Before the 1925 season, the Hanover and McSherrysville Rail Company voted to lease the park and operations to Estrovia of Huntington, West Virginia for a year. He changed the name to Forest Grove Park. The first the, the important decision that Mr. Villa was, was to hire August Karstup from Philadelphia to manage the park. Under the new management, many improvements were made. They replaced the existing carousel. 
they added a Ferris wheel and they had shipped into uh, which they had shipped in from Siena, Georgia. Many small children's rides were added. They expanded the concession stands and picnic area. It was changing from just a trolley park to an amusement park. The Cursive family had previously owned and managed Penn Morrow Trolley Park near Waynesboro. They signed a 15-year lease to manage Forest Grove Park. However, after the first year, they, things went so well that they decided to purchase the 16-acre park and became both manager and owner. And they also shortened the name from Forest Grove Park to just Forest Park. Forest Park was born. March 26, 1926. They had a grand opening on April 23rd, 1926. There's some tickets from Forest Park. I don't think they're still good any day, any anytime soon. August per personally invested $25,000 into the park improvements. That is $365,000 today. He added a penny card cage, shooting galleries, fun houses, a new Ferris wheel, and a new carousel. Oh, remembering the, remember riding the carousel and trying to catch the gold ring? The park had three different carousels from 1907 to 1967. The first Benzel Carousel in 1907 was the first year of Eckenberg Park. The second Benzel Car Carousel was installed in 1925 as a part of Forest Grove Park upgrade. Just one year later, it was sold to a, par sold to a park in Alaska. For the first year of Forest Park, they wanted to make it big and grand. So the third carousel was installed in 1926. The, the diameter was 48 feet. It contained 50 hand carved animals and four coaches. It was the largest of its kind in Eastern United States and the first to run by a 450 horsepower motor. It was later sold to Six Flags and uh, Texas. Then in 19, uh, 2005, uh, it was put up for sale, but the market price was so high that the uh, Hanover Historical Society could not purchase it. It was then not sold, but retired to a dome in Astro World uh, Park, where this plaque is. And the plaque reads here, this old time carousel was built in 1895. It features all the original animals, hand carved from heart, uh, hardwood, as well as the original pipe organ and drums. This historical carousel was in continuous operation in Hanover, Pennsylvania until 1907, and until it was brought to Astro World. Now it's permanently housed in a dome, uh, and this plaque is up, and it's like a museum piece now. Various organizations and churches and clubs, even families held their annual gatherings at the new park, Forest Park. There was very, very special attractions and entertainment. 
Yes, there was a human butterfly and a 3,000 year old mummy and lots of music. Now, if you notice here the, in the band, the guy in the far left, he's sleeping. They're all by himself. It was a really hopping place at one time. <laughs> What is an amusement park without a roller coaster? The Greyhound's first incline was 73 feet in height. It had 10 dips in all. A 50 horsepower electric motor was used to pull the cars up the first incline. From there, the cars ran on their own. Electric lights were installed to prove nighttime operation. It took 125 feet of lumber, tons of steel and nuts, 20, 200 gallons of paint. All the materials were furnished by local merchants. The bottom here is a picture looking down from the roller coaster into Hanover. The Greyhound was built by John Miller of Homewood. He was a widely known builder of roller coasters. Again, August, the owner, wanted nothing but the best. By now, the park had six up-to-date rides, 14 games of, 14 games, a, a ball room, roller skate rink, mini golf, closed picnic area, all restrooms. A 40-foot uh, Ferris wheel was a part of the park's improvements. Large crowds also came to hear and to see live concerts and performances. During World War II, Forest Park again honored soldiers with weekly dances. A few, a few of the local senior ladies can now recall, still recall, dancing with servicemen from Camp Colt in Gettysburg, which was commanded by Captain Dwight Eisenhower. As a contribution to the war effort, the owners purchased an adjacent acreage, converted it into a victory garden. There was also a stand that sold war bonds. I wonder what our imaginary friend would think of the park now, 60 years later. August's wife, Helen, said that he had taken many pictures of the park over his 40 years of success. But he stored them in the barn. And guess what happened? A mouse found them and enjoyed the photo so much that he invited his friends to share the wonderful bedding and food of Forest Park memories. And unfortunately, very few pictures were saved. For almost 60 years, the park grew through a tornado, a fire, two wars, Great Depression, three owners, and three blind mice. But on August 18th, 1966, fire broke out again. The fire damage was estimated over 100,000, which today is 780,000 today. The Hanover Evening Sun reported that for the 1967 season, there was going to, they were <coughs> going to rebuild the skating rink and the picnic area, but not the damaged rides. Sadly, this was the final blow for Forest Park. 
It was a slow and gradual death for the park. The attendance grid riddled, the rides were being removed, concession stands were closing, and upkeep was demolishing, it was diminishing. The tombstone soon appeared. A year after the fire, the Hanover Evening Sun reported that the family entered into an agreement with uh, Morton Curse to build a super a center on the site, a shopping center on the site. The obituary for the park. The park was born on August 26, 1926 in Hanover, York County. It died December 14th, 1967. All York County trolley parks, trolley parks began to die. The last York, York trolley ran February 1939. Cold Springs is now apartments. Elm Beach is now completely gone. Brookside is now just a picnic grove. Highland Park is now an abandoned quarry. And last of all, Forest Park is now a shopping center. The music is silent. The bright lights are gone. The animals on the carousel no longer prance in a merry circle. The thrills offered by many of the rides are now gone. Only the memories of the land excitement exists. <laughs> Unless we record these memories, they too will fail. Yesterday, it was a thriving park. Today is a fading memory. This is an actual picture of what it looks like, what it looked like. Perhaps it's just a sign of our times at Forest Park, which was, which once brought excitement and joy and laughter to many, would be raised to make room for an American institution called a shopping center. The next time you're at South Hanover Shopping Center, take a moment and close your eyes. You might just hear the roar of the old roller coaster. Mr. Kersen was buried in the cemetery next to the park so he could always enjoy the sounds from the enjoyment time that people, so many had. In 1919, just after World War I, there was almost a thousand trolley parks in the county. The National Historic uh, Association said, today only 11 parks that were trolley parks remain. And I'll show you those 11 parks. Okay, the first one is Lake Mount Park in Altoona. It was established in 1884. Doney Park in Allentown was, was founded in 1884 also. Seas Brook. Uh, Breeze. Sea Breeze Amusement Park in Rochester, New York, founded in 1879. Canny Wood Park, founded in 1898. Midway Park in Maple Springs, New York, founded in 1898. Canopy Park in Salem, North uh, North Hampshire, uh, founded in 1902. Uh, Camden Park in West Virginia, 1903. And Oaks Amusement Park in Portland, Oregon, 1905. Clifton Park, uh, founded in 1907. 
Waldeburg Park in Erie was founded in 1908. And I believe Quasi Amusement Park uh, was founded in 1908 as well. Hopefully you enjoyed the history of Forest Park and the memories. We welcome your thoughts and memories. The credits are here. There's a book by Mary uh, Mills. Uh, many pictures were by Bar uh, Barb Conister of, Public of Hanover Public School. My father was the director. I was the tech person and he allowed me to uh, show this. He did it several times. And in closing, we like to say, share your history before it becomes the forgotten past. And I want to say thank you, and we can open up for any questions or comments or share your memories of going there. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to try and unmute everybody. Um, I, I don't know if everybody was looking at the chat, but there are a few comments in there from uh, Derek Shaw just on uh, correct names of some of the parks that um, that you have there, Charlie, or correct okay. spelling, I should say, uh, okay. some of the parks. And um, let's see if there's any if, other comments. If you can send them to me, I would appreciate it. I'll correct those. Uh, those okay. came from my father. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so a comment uh, from Conrad, I wonder what happened to the carousel after Astro World closed? Does anyone know? Well, it's, it should still be, my understanding is that it's still up there in this uh, special dome, but I may be mistaken, but that's when we did research, that's what we found. Okay, so but even if, though Astro World's go it's closed. gone. Yeah. Right, okay. this is st still in a uh, protective dome up there. Is what I found is what I found online. Okay, very good. And where is Quasi Park, the last one of the eleven marine? That was in. Uh, let me look here. That is in Middleburg. I don't know what state C N is. Well, maybe maybe it's Connecticut. It's not, yeah, not, okay. uh, yeah, not. Yeah, maybe it is. Derek confirmed Quasi's in Connecticut. Okay. okay. Very good. Okay. Um, anybody else? You're welcome to unmute if you want to ask a question directly. And like, and like I said, you can that uh, trolley that was restored was found, I believe, that was found along in, in your county here, um, and they restored it, and you can actually still ride that one. The one in Rockville. That's correct. Okay. Just, to, j just a share. Uh, mm -hmm. My name is Mike Brady. I live in Greenville, North Carolina. I grew up in Big Sherry's town. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother spent her teenage years at Forest Park. Uh, I got to roller skate there with scouts. And my, my maternal great-grandmother, uh, Sarah Shannabrook, lived directly across the street from Forest Park. Wow. Yeah, that's special. Thank you. In, in my days, it was a bus line, not a trolley line. Uh oh. But uh, thank you very much for for it. Very informative. Oh, thank you, thank you. Good. Like I said, my father uh, was he lives in the brother and home, you know, closer out there, and he did the research, and I helped him technically put it together here. Okay. Even though it's at, even though it's outside of Nechip's area, um, I. Uh, did this for him, and he has done that several times already for people. I'll have to look and see if that uh, book on Forest Park is still available, and uh, if so, I'll uh, add it to our library collection. I, I, the Hanover Library has it. I know okay. that. I don't know if they had more copies or not. Okay. Well, they, they probably have it in the Pennsylvania room, which is fine. That means we will always have it. So good. Okay. All right, anyone else? Anybody uh, remembers r riding the trolleys? No. <laughs> oh. No. 
but I remember the park. I mean, I remember going there uh, with my brownie troop and we went roller skating. I, I remember going right under that gateway. I, I, you go in under the gateway and then turn to your left to head back to the roller rink. Well, you and didn't ride the roller. You didn't ride the. Uh, I did not coaster. ride the roller coaster. No, I was older before I ever rode a roller coaster. I wasn't brave enough to ride that one. I was I was too young. We moved to York in when I was in fourth grade. So my first roller coaster was probably Hershey Park, because that's where we went for our school trips. Believe it or not, <laughs> we could afford to go to Hershey Park because it wasn't you didn't pay to go in then. You just paid per ride back in those days. You know, it was an open park. The closest I got to the trolley was growing up on the uh, west end of North Street in McSherry's town, and it was still referred to as the car line. Okay. When did you move away? Uh, 1965. Okay. Graduated from high school Friday night, was in boot camp Monday morning. Uh-huh. Got it. Yeah, that was Vietnam. I was... Uh... Right around your time. I graduated in 66. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, uh, everybody is just saying thanks. My roller, my parents roller skated there on dates. I love that comment. Yeah. I remember um, my mom and my aunts talking about the dances. Uh, the dances were there in the summer and the evening. Uh, I remember my mom talking about riding the <laughs> Okay, I'm, I didn't hear that. Yeah, my mom uh, used to tell us about she would ride the trolley to York from Dover. That's back when neat. it was still busy. Yeah, I guess that would have been in the uh, 20s, I guess, 1920s. Yeah, if it ended in the 30s, the late 30s. Um, I mean, I certainly rode the bus enough. I remember the buses. Does anybody remember the... There used to be a small uh, 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 carousel and stuff near Rudder's Dairy. I remember going to it when I was a kid. No. Yeah, there no. was. It was a small park there or something, um, up there near where the Masonic lodges and stuff. Oh, is that was that Oak? That was White Oak Park. Yeah, White was Oak it? Park. Yeah. Now that that was a pavilion. And, um, you know, picnic area and, and, where we went on Friday nights. But other than that, um, I don't remember it ever having a carousel. Yeah, it had a carousel. Yeah, I remember riding a couple of times. And they used to have concerts up there a lot. Yes. But I don't, yeah, I don't remember a carousel either. Hmm. Derek, are you still here? Are you aware of a carousel there? It was where the uh, storage units yes. are now. I know exactly where White Oak Park is or was. I mean, well, I mean, that's where the carousel was, you know, yeah. I, that I remember. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah, I just remember the carousel at Brookside. Mm -hmm. Barely. <laughs> now, uh, um, let's see here. Um, the weightlifting guy. Um, yeah, Bob Hoffman. Yeah, yeah, he bought, owned that. That. yeah right. he bought that. Right. Mm -hmm. And eventually mm -hmm. donated to the township. Right. Mm -hmm. And I don't okay. know what they did with the carousel there. Uh, it was, I don't recall who actually sold it, but it was, it's in Southern California now at some park down there. Well, at least that's the last I heard of it. Interesting. I saw on eBay one time one of the horses was being sold separately from it. Hmm. From that carousel? Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, it was on eBay a couple years ago. Um, I still, I like the carousel up there at uh, um, uh, the park there, uh, Knobles. Oh, yeah. I like everything about Knobles. Mm -hmm. That's a great park. Mm -hmm. um, okay, somebody also made a comment. Penny said the moose gave their members a free day at the park. 
That was a nice treat. Wow. Yeah. And one day in May, elementary students rode all day for free. Another wow. good comment. Yeah. Um, I, I remember the first parks I remember going to were as a school trip. Um, we, we At the end of the year school trip, we went to Hershey Park um, when it was still, like I said, an open park and it was free to get in. You just paid 10 cents for the kiddie rides and 25 cents for the adult. So uh, that was my first roller coaster. And then we went to um, the other park. Um, Williams what, Grove. Yes, Williams Grove. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, that's one I remember. Oh, well, yeah. in Hershey too. Yeah. But then, yeah, then we switched over to, um, to Williams Grove. I remember both of those parks well. Okay. All right. Another comment here from Conrad. My family has run the arcade at Knobles for over 50 years. Oh, it's a wow. wonderful place. Yes, oh. it is. Wow. I agree. And that spook house still scares me to this day. <laughs> I just want you to know. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, huh. I love everything about Knobles. So. Did that start out as a trolley park? No, it, no, it did not. Because it would still be, it would be on the listing of remaining trolley parks, uh, which, yeah. Yeah. which is not on the list. But if you notice that all these are in western, on excuse me, eastern Pennsylvania. I don't know of any out west. Hmm. Interesting. Well, Kennywood's out in Pittsburgh, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. West Mifflin. It, yeah, it's Pittsburgh. Right? Yeah. Okay, another comment here, Charlie. The roller coaster, I'm sure she's talking about Forest Park. She said the roller coaster was still standing and some of the buildings are all I remember. And my parents telling me stories of skating. I was born in, I think it went away, 63, I believe. Uh, yeah, born in 63. That would make sense. Yes. Because it wasn't really running a whole lot. Uh, I mean, the only thing I ever did at Forest Park was actually uh, roller skate. I, I didn't. I don't remember um, being on any of the rides or anything. Yeah. Okay. Um, Derek did add that he was not aware of a carousel at White Oak Park unless it was oh. a small one. Okay, it, it might have been a small. I don't know. I was a small child, and, and that's yeah. just one of the memories or something of riding something there okay okay here's another one our church group youth group and brownie troop would skate at forest park i remember riding the carousel when they sold off parts of the park my dad bought one of the whip cars oh wow wow oh, yeah huh Interesting. Oh, geez, uh, oh. Okay, another one from Conrad. Noble started as a destination for Tally Ho's trips by covered wagon. It opened on 7 4, 1926, July 4th. July 4th it opened. Okay. The swimming hole at Knobles was the attraction before the park. That is when the pool first opened. Okay, oh. it's when we oh, it first. Okay, yeah, everything about Knobles is nice. I mean, I never even got to camp there, but I always envied anybody who did because it was just such a neat place, and the swimming area, and all the neat stuff you climb on to play at the pool. I I was told that there was a, a trolley park up up in Smoker Dam, somewhere in that area. And they had a, a large uh, swimming pool there as well. Okay. Hmm. Don't know about that. Um, there's a house in Knobles where you can spend the night. Oh, mm -hmm. that would be neat. Except I'm I'm kind of um, I have a house. In, <laughs> my sister lives in Danville, <laughs> so we just go visit her. And then we go to the park. So very nice. Was okay. the park was the park open during the uh, COVID? 
Uh, uh, you mean uh, Knobles? Yeah. I don't know. Conrad, are you still here? Yes. It opened July last year. Okay. okay. Good. Okay. Very good. Okay. Well, I think this was a great conversation. I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, yeah, thank you. People are saying, all right, Charlie, thank you for this very informative and enlightening program. I loved all the pictures. You did a great job. Well, thank um, you. I'll, so, I'll, I'll make sure I'll pass that on to my father who put up, he's 91 uh -huh. now, and he put all this together a few years ago, and I helped him with it with the uh, special effects and stuff. Um, so okay. I will pass that on to him. Okay. I want to let people know these history programs are recorded and they will be available on your county library's YouTube channel and then on NACHEP, NACHEP's website. Thank you everyone for participating with us this evening. And we appreciate all the comments. Stay safe, stay connected to your library and good night, everyone. And just know that next year we hope to have maybe some live programs, but if not, we'll see you here again in Zoom.